So now we're going to move on to uh, equilibrium in an acids and bases. Equilibrium uh, in the context of Le Chatelier's principle. So once again, these problems, this section right here, this problem number four, is all about Le Chatelier, <coughs> which uh, says that an equilibrium will stay at, a system at equilibrium will stay at equilibrium until it's subjected to some type of outside stress. And what we said when we were doing, I did the demonstration in class was that equilibrium shifts uh, toward a decrease. And away from an increase. Oops, increase. That's true for everything except pressures, and for pressure, if pressure goes up, the shift will be toward the side with more, excuse me, with less moles, or shift to less volume, which is less moles. If pressure goes down, the shift to more volume, because it just goes back to Boyle's Law, pressure up, volume down, and so on. All right, so looking at this equation, I'm going to rewrite this equation down here just so I can draw up and down arrows. So N2O3, NO, and NO2. Okay. Um, why did I put a 2 right here? Still early this morning. So let's get rid of that 2. There we go. I think when I put a 2 there, I really intended to put a sign right there. So this would be a double arrow, so I'm trying to do. Okay, so the first thing says removing NO2. So we take away NO2, that's our initial stress, toward a decrease, the shift toward a decrease. So we will go to the right. All right, and uh, since it goes to the right, this is not asked for in the question, but since I'm re rewriting it and going over it, the NO is going to increase because when this drops, that has to go up because you're going to, if you're going to make more of this, when this comes apart to make more of this, you're also going to make more of that. And this will go down. Then when I add NO, that's this, goes away from an increase, so the equilibrium is going to shift left. That'll make more of this and less of that. So my initial stress, once again, was that. I might also point out that as soon as you drop some of this, this tries to it tries to be replaced. It goes that way. When I increase this, some of what I add will get used up again. So, um, so in other words, there's a, a secondary reaction. When I put when I did this is my initial stress. Then a little bit of what I added reacts. So then some of what I put in goes back over to here. It keeps the ratio the same. All right, raising temperature. You look up here for temperature. We know that delta H is positive. So does that make the reaction endothermic or exothermic? Is energy going in or is energy going out? Well, since that's a positive sign, energy is going in. So we put energy over here. So now if we raise the temperature, equilibrium shifts away from an increase. So it's going to go right. This will go down. And both of these will go up. Now, since temperature is not a substance, I mean, it doesn't have a concentration, um, we can't get that secondary, um, you know how I said this drops a little bit? Can't do it over here because there's, there's no concentration. So what that means is that the ratio will also change when you change the temperature. All these equilibrium constants the equilibrium constants are dependent on temperature. They only are true at a particular temperature. And when you change the temperature, the ratio changes. All right, now lowering the pressure. We said pressure, if you increase it, it shifts to less volume. You're decreasing it, it shifts to uh, more volume. So in this case, we're lowering the pressure. So we're going down. So we should go to the side with more volume. And then you look up here, there's one mole of gas on the left side, on this side, one and one make two. So if it's going to go to the side with more volume, which way will it go? 
Well, two moles of gas occupy more space than one mole of gas does, so it will go to the right or to the side with more volume. All right, that was number four. Now, the, uh, these problems here. The, now, these are set up, this section of the test is set up in, in sequence problems, so these four go together, these four go together, uh, nine, 9 and 10 are um, kind of independent from each other, and then number 3 is a sequence of problems again, and so on. All right, so number 1, is HClO3 strong or weak? We said oxygen, oops, minus hydrogen, greater than or equal to 2, equals a strong acid. That's a little bit of an oversimplification, but it almost always works. So what's 3 minus 1? Two, it's one, uh, 3 minus 1 is 2, right? So we are greater than or equal to 2, so we would say this is a strong acid. So now we need to know the hydronium ion concentration of a 0 0.07 molar solution of HClO3. So you write the equation, HClO3 plus water. Is there an equilibrium? No. So if this is 0 0.07, why is there no equilibrium? Because it's strong. So strong acids, no equilibrium. So 0 0.07 then all reacts, and that's 0 0.07, and that's 0 0.07. So the answer is, that all goes away, turns into this. So the answer to that question is 0 0.07. So now we want to know the pH. Well, pH equals the negative log of the hydronium ion concentration. So in this case, it's the negative log of 0 0.07. So you turn on your calculator and you do log of 0 0.07. I'm using a different calculator than I usually use today, so we've got to find that. There we go. Log 0 0.07, 1.15. Okay, so the negative log of 0 0.07 is 1.15. I usually just type in 0 0.07, hit the log button, and I get negative 1.15, and then I just change the negative to positive. I drop the negative. All right, so that's 1.15. So we know that pH plus pOH equals 14. So all I have to do to find the pOH is subtract 1.15 from 14. So we're going to get 12.85. Once again, this is just algebra, so I'm going to take time to just write down what I just did. So 1.15 plus x equals 14. So how do you solve for x? Subtract 1.15. That's it for problem sequence one. Problem sequence two. All right, I went through this and I went through in class um, why these three h's don't count on the O minus h rule, but here's what they are. Here's that explanation again. So this, well, the dot diagram for this particular acid would look like this. All right, so these three H's um, are not easily lost. They're sharing electrons much more evenly than these, two than these two atoms are. So the electrons are pulled toward the oxygen because it's more electronegative. So this is the hydrogen that actually ionizes. How many hydrogens is that? One. So we're really just counting this hydrogen with these two oxygens. So what's two minus one? Two minus one is one. We said it had to be greater than or equal to two in order to be strong. So it's not strong, it's weak, and so we would say it's gaseous. So then to find the hydronium ion concentration, we know we've got acetic acid plus water. This time there is an equilibrium because it's weak, so double arrows. All right, so there's our um, equation for the acid. And by the way, this is the acid, that's the base, that's the conjugate acid, that's the conjugate base. I'll go ahead and label that. That's not part of this question, but might as well review it. So, uh, and then whatever acts like an acid going from right to left would be the conjugate acid, and this is going to act like a base going from right to left, so it's conjugate base. And the two pairs are, this is the acid, that's its conjugate base, and this is the base, that's its conjugate acid. All right. 
So this we know is 0.5, but since this is equilibrium, now we're back up in the equilibrium kind of problems where you have to ice it because um, the uh, concentration that we're given is the initial concentration. It is a 0.5 molar solution of acetic acid. So we know this is going to go down by x, and this will go up by x. We're assuming we don't have any of this at the beginning because all we're told about is the acetic acid. And that'll go up by x. And so at equilibrium, you have 0.5 minus x, x, and x. For these problems, we um, looked at a way to simplify them. So let's review that. We know that the uh, Ka is equal to the hydronium ion times the acetate ion. And once again, I'm getting those from right here. Divided by... So divided by the HC2H3O2. Notice again that I left water out. Why did I leave out water? Because it's liquid and you can't change the concentration of a liquid, so therefore they're not included in equilibrium expressions. All right, so now we have x on top, x on top, divided by 0.5 minus x. And that all equals the constant, which is 1.75 times 10 to the negative fifth. All right, so now this is where you can shortcut. If the, this is 0.5, which means 5 times 10 to the negative first. So it's 5 times, I'm not going to write that because it's going to get too sloppy, but that's 5 times 10 to the negative 1. If the difference between this 5 and the exponent on this concentration is 3 or more, then it's okay to ignore this minus x. So we will say that this number times 0.5 is equal to x squared. So I'm going to write that down, 1.75 times 10 to the negative fifth multiplied by 0.5 and that gives me 8.75 times 10 to the negative sixth. All right, so I'm going to rewrite, I'm going to take this, go over here where I got a little bit more room. So I know that 8.75 times 10 to the negative fifth equals x squared. Nope, I said that wrong. 10 to the negative 6th equals x squared. So 8.75 times 10 to the negative 6th equals x squared. So now how do you solve for x? Just take the square root. So I'm going to take the square root of that number. Gives me 0 0.00296. So x equals 0 0.00296. All right, now there's another, um, so that's, that's our final answer. And I was going to mention that there's another rule called the 5% rule that you can use to determine whether it's okay to ignore the X or not. I'm just going to mention that here. This is 0 0.00296. If this answer is less than 5% of your original answer, then it was okay to ignore the minus X. So if you divide this 0 0.00296, divide that by 0.5, and multiply by 100, you find out that this was about 0.6% of the original one. So if it's less than 0.5%, than less than 5%, then it was okay to ignore the minus x, and 0.6 is way less than 5%, so it was fine. All right, so now x is 0 0.00296. That is the hydronium ion concentration, so 0 0.00296. And the hydrogen ion concentration is used to find the pH, so what do you do next? 0 0.00296, take the logarithm of that number. So you take log 0 0.00296, 2.5. So the pH here is 2.5. And the OH would be 14 minus 2.5 like we did up here. So 14 minus 2.5 is 11.5. And that's the end of that one. Okay, now number nine, and I'm going to stop for today's video. Um, the, um, we want to know which one has a higher pH, whether it would be this salt or this base. So, which one has a higher pH? Remember, bases have a pH of above seven. 
This is a salt. Its pH should be somewhere in the neighborhood of 7. This one, for reasons that we will learn in class on Tuesday, is actually going to have a pH a little bit less than 7. Uh, and this one is a bit definite base. You know it's a base because it has the OH on it. And so bases always have a higher pH than a salt. Uh, and also acids would be lower pH than a salt. In this case, we just have the salt and we have the base. And um, the pH of the base would be higher. So the answer to this one is NH4OH. All right, since I'm talking to you and it won't take but a minute, I'm going to point out one other thing for the, those of you who watch this and have a little head start next week. Okay, this is another salt, just like this was a salt. Okay, the salt is the positive ion from a base. So in this case, the Na would have come from NaOH and the negative ion from an acid. So the acid here would have been HNO2. So you see all I did was take the NO2, put an H in front, that tells us what acid it came from. I take the Na, put an OH at the end, that tells us what base it comes from. All right, so since this is a strong base, do you reckon remember that's a strong base? OH is in, um, bases are OHs, the first two columns, except for beryllium, made strong bases. Is this a strong or a weak acid? This is two, that's one. So that's a difference of one, so that makes that weak. All right, this is a little shortcut to determine if you have a salt, is it going to be an acidic or basic or a neutral salt? Well, and um, you could think of it like this, the salt from a strong base and a weak acid. Well, the base is strong, the acid's weak, so the salt will be basic. So if it's basic, you'd expect that to be above 7. So we'd say greater than 7. Let's go back and look at this one. Okay, the base that this came from would be NH4OH. Put an OH on the NH4. The acid that it came from would be HBr. Um, HBr was one of the three strong binary acids. I told you there were three of them, HCR, H HCl, and HI. H HCl, HBr, HI. Since this is not a group 1 or a group 2 base, because ammonium is not even an element in group 1 or group 2, it's a weak base. So this salt came from a weak acid. It's giving a weak base and a strong acid. Weak base, strong acid. So which is going to win? The strong. So the, this salt will be acidic. And that, if, we, if I had asked you what is the pH of the, this solution, you'd think it would be less than 7 because it is a salt of a strong acid, which overcomes the weak base. Now, again, that's only a gimmick to help you figure out strong versus weak. Um, but it works for everything except weak and weak. And the reason that it's acidic or basic, we will talk about in class. All right, now the, the um, I'm gonna throw one more at you here, so, or two more. So NaCl, and um, let's do uh, FeCl3. Uh, All right, so if we did NaCl, Na comes from sodium hydroxide, and that's HCl, so is that a strong or weak base? Strong, strong or weak acid? Strong, so strong, strong, pH seven. It should be right at seven, because there's, uh, it came from, both of these are strong, and so neither one wins. Uh, down here, FeCl3, Fe is not a group one or a group two base, so the FeOH would be what it came from, FeOH3, and Fe is not a group one or a group Two, so it's weak. Uh, this is HCl, and HCl is a strong acid. So would this salt be basic or acidic? Well, it's a strong acid, so it's going to win over the weak base, so it'll be less than 7. It'll be acidic. All right, I'll get these two posted, and uh, have to come back on um, after next class and, and uh, review these. Okay.